Hello and welcome. I'm Daughter of Darkness, your narrator. I'm happy to announce that there was indeed enough material to make a part three of Diaries from Hell. To recap, part one and two were taken from the real life journals that David Sullivan kept as a young boy and into adulthood. These journal entries focused on the terrifying experiences he and his family suffered at the claws of an evil entity that lived in their home. At the end of part two, David, as an adult, was visiting his father in hospice care, and they discussed the demon and that house for the first time since moving out. David's father succumbed to his cancer, and later his cousins moved into that multifamily home with families of their own. Tonight, we will focus on David's discussion with his cousins and the emails he's exchanged recently with the current owners of that hell house. But before we get into the stories, if you haven't yet, I invite you to become an official member of the Family of Darkness and subscribe to the channel. Just tap or click my eyeball in the lower right-hand corner of your screen, or simply click the subscribe button. Either will do the trick and hit the notification bell so you're always sent an invitation to the weekly party. But for now, sit back, relax, let me lead the way, and let's get scared together, together. The last time I saw my extended family was at my father's funeral. It was a real Irish send-off, filled with booze, food, and stories about my dad. Part memorial, part comedy roast. There is where I reconnected with my cousins, John and Tom, who had moved into my old house as adults. Let's jump forward a few months. March, 2011. Have you ever felt like your past was on a collision course with your present? Well, for me, that began with a not-so-simple phone call. The cell rang, and on the caller ID, I saw it was my cousin, John. The conversation went like this. Me. Hello? John. Hey, it's John. Uh, listen, I wanted to ask you something the last time we met, but you know it wasn't the right time, being the funeral and all. Me. Sure, what's up? John. So my brother and I inherited that old place that you used to live in. Me. Uh, yeah. And you're having weird experiences and you want to know if I experienced anything like it, right? Uh, yeah. How'd you know? Me. Yes. Everything from noises to smells to banging doors to cabinets opening and closing on their own to electronic toys turning on by themselves, to flickering lights, to temperature differences. And my dad and I even saw it once. John, really? Me, oh yeah, there's definitely something dark there. Are you aware of the history of the house? John, I'm gonna put you on speakerphone so my brother can join in. Tom here, how's it going? Me. So, you guys know the house was a funeral home at one time, right? Both cousins. No. Me. Yeah. Dad told me right before he died. It was owned by a real crook who stole from the dead. He'd take their jewelry off their bodies and hide it in a safe before burying them. It was at this point that I told them everything I knew about the house's history. And when I finished, all I got back was stunned silence. John, everyone said we shouldn't live here, just sell it, but we thought it would be good to keep it in the family. I've got the first floor and Tom's up on the second floor. Tom, my girlfriend and our kid live with me on the second floor. Me, Tom, if you've got your kid in that back bedroom, that used to be my room, and if I were you, I'd move him to a different room ASAP. That closet? The entity uses that as a portal to come and go. It tormented me for years with that damn closet. 
Tom. Yeah, we found that closet door open several mornings in a row. And sometimes at night, I can hear my kid talking. And when I ask him who he's talking to, he says, the old man that lives in the closet. We did switch rooms, but the closet is still opening on its own. And it's like we're being watched at all times. Me. My father told me I saw and spoke to an old man when I was a kid. He was always trying to get me to go into the basement. John. Oh yeah, nope, nope, nope. We do not keep anything in that basement. Not after the movers got hurt. Me. What happened? Tom. We hired some guys to move everything out of the attic and the basement. The attic went fine, but the movers had one hell of a time with that basement. One guy fell down the stairs, and another had that built-in safe fall on his leg. That crew quit over the basement issues, so we hired another crew, and dude, one guy lost two fingers trying to move that safe, and he swears something bit those fingers off of him. That safe is the only thing still left in the basement. Note from present day poster. Yeah, this creeped me out just as much typing it now as it did back when I heard it the first time. John, friends and family wanted to take some things from the house, mementos, furniture, and such. Anyone who took anything returned it within a week. They all said whatever they took from our house made their houses feel creepy, so they'd return it. Me, has anyone seen it? I then went on to explain about seeing the entity and told them what it looked like as I remembered it. Me, look, it seems to build and build the tension. Then it does something really frightening. Then it takes the time to savor the chaos it's created. Then it starts all over again. Honestly, do not mess around with it. It can seriously screw with you. Do you guys ever get into stupid fights? Like, get so angry for no reason at all? If so, that's what this thing feeds off of. John. Yeah, dude, we do. How do we stop it? Me. I don't think you can. But Dad said Uncle Jay had some luck having an Irish priest come in and bless the place. But the calm was always short-lived. It seems to be bound to the house and the items in the house. When we moved, we left a bunch of stuff behind just to make sure it couldn't follow us. Tom, we'll try that. Me, okay guys, good luck. November, 2011, John called. He told me they moved out and why. We were all three on speakerphone again. John, Man, we really, really screwed up. We had to move. We're gonna sell the place and never look back. Me, what happened? John, my brother had a priest come and bless the place. He blessed each room of the house, upstairs and down. He said we'd need to do it a few times. After about a month, the house grew calm and we thought it was over. It really was like a new place. Me. I take it something changed? John. Yeah. Man, I really screwed up after our Halloween party. Tom and I threw a big party and drinking was involved. We had a good buzz going and I had been talking about the odd stuff that had been going on in the house and well, we thought it was gone. Me. Dormant is more like it. John. You're right. It was really dumb to think it was gone. Anyway, one of our friends, a guy that I'd been telling about the weird stuff from day one, started saying he wanted to use a Ouija board. We kept telling him no, but he kept bringing it up, and then he went to the car and brought a Ouija board in anyway, and he said, let's find out what's really here. Me. John. Please tell me you didn't use that thing. Not in that house. 
John. I was buzzed. Tom left the party and went back up to his own apartment. But three of my friends and I, we stayed and somehow ended up sitting around the board, lights off, candles burning, and drinking, asking questions. We asked, is anyone there who will speak with us? No. No one will speak with us? Yes. What's your name? No reply. Were you alive once? No. What are you? We are. What are you doing here tonight? Waiting. What are you waiting for? Blood. John. At that point, a glass on the table fell over and shattered. We all jumped up, and a few of the candles went out. But we continued. Did you do that? Yes. Are you going to show us more? No. Are you trying to harm us? No reply. What do you want? Kill. Have you killed before? Yes. What did people do to you? Called. When were you called? 1908. Why were you called? Revenge. Revenge on who? A thief. Tom, at that point, doors started banging in the whole house. The sound woke me up upstairs in my apartment. The bedroom felt uncomfortable and cold, and I know I heard something in that closet. John, we heard the banging too, but like drunken idiots, we just continued anyway. Was that you again? We are here. When did you first come to the house? 1925. Why do you stay here? Sorrow. What, the mourners kept you here? Hunger. Will you ever leave this place? Never. What if we call a priest again? No reply. What if we have a psychic come in? Mad. What if we force you to leave? We are here. John. Then the table felt like it lifted, so everyone stood up. Someone hit the lights, and when they came on, we could see blood and glass on the planchette, and we all had cuts on our fingers. Just then, the doors stopped slamming, and the planchette on the board untouched by anyone and covered in our blood, moved over to goodbye all by itself. That is when all hell broke loose. We heard growling and banging from the basement door. The lights dimmed, and it looked like shadows were crawling in from under the door. We all started yelling. Tom interrupted. I always thought you were pulling my chain when you told me about all the things that went on in this house but I turned on all the lights on the second floor and tried to rush downstairs, but I got stopped. A dark mist was coming up from the basement door and it started to move up the stairs. It was ice cold if you stepped in it. I raced back upstairs and got my girlfriend and it started to come out from under the closet door too in the bedroom, like a black fog. We ran and got our kid, turned to leave, and that's when we saw it standing in the kitchen. My kid looked and said, Hey, look, it's the old man. But what was in the kitchen wasn't a man. It was huge. Big head, long arms ending in clawed hands, and blacker than anything I've ever seen. I grabbed my keys, we ran outside and got in the car, and we were gone. John, then it appeared downstairs, 
My friends bolted as it hurled the planchette at us. We ran from the house, and what I remember next was that both outside doors slammed shut at the same time. Me. So no one was harmed? Tom. No, no one was harmed. Not really. So did it ever follow you after you left? Me. No, not when I moved out on my own or when my family moved. John. Yeah, we're done with this. Me. Good call. And take nothing from the house that was there when you moved in. Leave it all behind. That's what we did. Note from present day poster. By 2012, they moved out for good. This would be the last time that I spoke with my cousins about the entity. They're both alive and well and want nothing more to do with that house or to even talk about it with anyone anymore. The house was then sold to a flipper a few months after they moved. My research shows that they couldn't sell the place and they ended up losing it to the bank. For eight years, it changed hands again and again, very quickly. And now a young couple owns it and lives there. But my experience with the house doesn't end there. I recently got in contact with the current owners. After sharing my experiences with all of you, I got to thinking about that house and all that has happened there over the years and all that may still be happening today. So after some soul searching, I decided to reach out via snail mail to the current owners of the house to compare notes, but also to warn them as best I could. Here is what I wrote. Hello, this will likely be the most bizarre letter you will ever receive. When I was a kid, I grew up on the second floor of your house. To prove what I'm saying and that I do know the house, I've included a drawing of the layout of the second floor. The house was once a funeral home, and I'm writing because I've been sharing my experiences with people online, and it's really awoken in me a sense of responsibility about the house. I'll be blunt. The house has a dark entity in it. I know this will sound crazy, but I've seen it. I lived in fear of it for years. I was terrorized by it, physically assaulted by it, and I believe it went so far as to oppress my entire family. The basement is unnerving. Have any children started to talk to an imaginary friend calling himself the old man? Here's an email address where you can respond to me if you choose to. Please forgive the lack of identification or return address, but I've learned to be wary of anything physically coming to me from that house to mine. A few days later, this email arrived. No, you're not crazy. We've seen it too. When your letter first arrived, I admit my partner and I were very skeptical. But you captured the layout of the upper floor perfectly. It's odd, but we actually took comfort knowing that we're not going crazy and that somebody else experienced these things too. We moved in about eight or nine months ago. The house was undervalued for its size, so we thought we were getting a great deal. Being non-essential workers, we're both quarantined at home, and it feels like something is drawing and feeding on the fear and uncertainty we have right now. My partner thinks she has a psychic gift, and the night after we closed on the house, she couldn't sleep. She said we'd made a big mistake, and that something was waiting for us in the new house. I was always a skeptic about the paranormal, but lately, I'm thinking there is more to this world. We moved in, and on the first day, the home stunk of rotten eggs, and it would go away then return. When it wasn't smelling like eggs, it smelled like compost. Our cat will hiss and growl in the middle of the night and will find her gaze locked on the door to the basement or some random corner. We hear footsteps on the second floor, but no one is renting the apartment up there. We called the police once, convinced that somebody had broken in. They heard the footsteps too and went up to investigate, but they found that the doors and windows were locked and no one was there. 
One day, we saw a figure, it had to be a good seven feet tall, taking up the entire frame of what was once your bedroom window as we were gardening outside. It appeared to be watching us. My partner tried to get a picture of it on her phone, but the file was corrupted. You mentioned an old man, and I had a long pause after reading that. My partner and I have no children, but we do have a nephew, and he has been going on about an old man that talks to him in his playroom. That room is the one directly underneath your old bedroom. My partner has studied Reiki, and she's trying to push positive energy into the house to draw out the negative, but so far, no luck. Thank you for reaching out. Can we continue to talk like this? My reply, of course we can. If you have any questions at all, I'll do my best to answer them. The house, sadly, has seen very little in the way of positive emotions that would leave any positive feeling at all. The current times in which we live don't help much either. And the entity loves the darker emotions like fear and anger. We had some temporary luck with getting the home blessed by a priest, but it never lasted. Something would always end up emboldening it, and it would come back stronger than ever and angry. The entity seems bound to the house or land, so you can usually get a reprieve if you need one by just going away for a while. I recommend doing that when things get bad. Actually, I would say just sell and get out, but I know you can't. Whatever you do, do not try to communicate with it. End of email. After contacting and warning the new owners, I don't think the demon liked that. After all, evil thrives in the dark, and I was shedding light on it. Since then, a string of bad luck has befallen me. Number one, a bat was found inside my home. Even though no windows or doors were open, no screens were missing, and no entrance was found in the attic. I have no idea how it got in. 2. My coffee mug shattered in my hand at work, out of the blue. I didn't need stitches, but I did get a minor burn. 3. I have issues with my heart. I, like my father, uncle, and grandfather before me, have an aortic aneurysm so I'm hyper aware of any changes in my heartbeat rhythms. On a recent visit to my cardiologist, to review the growth of the aneurysm, a car accident shut down the main road and I was forced to make a detour. While detouring, I found myself on an all too familiar road that took me to a place, one that I hadn't seen in 30 years, my old house. There it was and I stopped in front of it. My heart started beating out of sync, and my left arm burned. When I got to the cardiologist's, I found this down my left arm. The entity had scratched me. I still hate that house. And here is a picture of that very house that David Sullivan was kind enough to share. Once again, I'd like to thank David Sullivan for allowing us a peek inside the world of real evil. And I'd like to thank all of you for listening tonight and for your continued support. Shares, likes, and comments are so very important for us to grow this channel together so we can keep meeting this way in the dark. And if you want to be sure to get that party invitation every week, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. But gate crashers are also most welcome. So come as you are. I'll love you anyway. So until next time, stay scared, my friends. <laughs>